Welcome to this video on combinational logic. In our previous video, we looked at the different types of logic gates and how they functioned and represented them using truth tables. In this video, we're going to join logic gates together to form some very simple combinational logic circuits. And we're going to apply much of the same principles in this video as we did in the last one. So if you haven't watched our previous video on logic gates, I suggest looking at that first. But let's look at how now we can combine these logic gates together to form these combinational logic circuits. So in this particular example, you can see that I have an AND gate and an OR gate. But one of the inputs from the OR gate is actually connected to the output of the AND gate. And so the behavior of this AND gate is then going to affect the input of this OR gate. And what we're going to do is we're going to construct a truth table, um, which is going to give us our final output Q based on the behaviors of both of these logic gates. I want to give a little hint, first of all, as to how to set up our truth table and a useful tip to do this uh, and to determine the number of possible combinations. Here we have three inputs. How many possible combinations are there? Well, a useful formula to remember is 2 to the power n, n being the number of inputs. And so here we have three inputs, 2 to the power 3 or 2 cubed is 8. So there's eight possible combinations of inputs A, B and C that I want to fill out first of all in my truth table. Now, a little tip to help you construct your truth table is what I call the half and half rule. Here's how it works. We know that there are eight possible combinations. Let's start with column A. For the half and half rule, I'm going to make half of them zero. So that's four zeros. And I'm going to make half of them one. So four ones. Then we half that again, the half and half rule. I have four zeros. For column B, I'm going to make half of those zeros, so that's two half of them ones. Repeat for the remaining. And then for column C, the half rule again, I'm going to make half of these zeros, there's two zeros here, and two ones, I'm going to make half of these zeros one. So now I've only got one zero and one. And repeat. Now without even checking, I can be guaranteed that I've covered every single possible combination, all the way from 0, 0, 0 to, to 1, 1, 1. So I hope you find that useful to construct a truth table of any size for any number of inputs. The same rule applies. The next step is to simplify this a little bit before we try and approach what this Q value is going to be for every column. And the way that I'm going to simplify this is by putting an intermediate step in. And the step where I'm going to put an intermediate in is probably around here somewhere. It'll be much easier to evaluate the behavior of this AND gate first and figure out what I'm getting at this point before I then worry about the OR gate and what I'm going to get for Q. So I'll, I can name this anything, uh, this point here, but I'll, I'll give it the preceding letter before Q, the letter P. And so I'll label my point here letter P. And I'm also going to add an extra column in my truth table there. We know that the AND gate only gives an output if A and B are both 1. Then P would be 1. And so let's have a little scan of our columns here. A and B need to both be 1. And this only happens in two instances here at the bottom. And so I have two uh, entries for P as 1, the rest are 0. Finally, I can now try and determine the uh, result for the column Q. Q is the output of an OR gate and Q, we know the behavior of the OR gate will be high or 1 if P or C are one, or both. 
So let's have a scan down our column here because we want to find an instance where P or C are one. And so that happens here. It happens here. It happens here, here, and here. The rest will be zero. So now we've determined the output Q for every possible combination in this logic circuit. Let's look at one more example and a very similar idea. I have now an XOR gate or an exclusive OR gate connected to a NAND gate. And again, I'll do the same thing and create an intermediate step here, P. And again, I can also construct my possible combinations by using the half and half rule that I did previously. So four zeros and four ones, because again, I know that there's three, po uh, sorry, eight possible combinations as a result of three inputs. Half of those zeros in column B. And finally, we're down to single zeros and ones for column C. So again, I've covered every possible combination there. So remember that the exclusive OR gate behaves in a manner where P would be one if B or C, but not both, are one. So let's have a scan down our B and C columns to see when that's the case. We find that that's the case here, here, not here because it's an exclusive OR gate. If that was an, a normal OR gate, we'd have a one here, but not in the instance of an exclusive OR gate. Uh, here, here. All of the other values will be zero. Finally, the uh, result of Q is the output of a NAND gate. Remember, A and P are the inputs to our, our NAND gate, and the result is Q. And so we can approach this um, by, first of all, considering the behavior of an AND gate. An AND gate would only give a 1 if both A and B are 1, and the rest of the time it would be 0. But because this is a NAND gate, its behavior is exactly the opposite. It'll only give a zero when A and P are one. The rest of the time, it'll give a high or a one output. So let's have a look for any instances where A and P are both one. And the output will be zero. That happens here. and here. And the rest of the time, you'll get one on the output. So I hope you found these two examples useful on how we can apply truth tables to more uh, slightly complicated uh, combinational logic circuits by joining two logic gates together, how we can determine the numbers of possible combinations and write those out, but then how we can evaluate by working through the circuit, putting in intermediate steps as necessary to evaluate the final output Q for given combinations of combinational logic circuits.